So, we all know that Echo has returned. The big question is, will he make it out alive? Who will be present during the Siege of Tantos, and also who will be left standing at the end of Bad Match Season 3? Well, I think I might have an idea. What is going on everyone, and welcome back to Cantina Talk. So I know many of you, as well as myself, were really happy to see Arc Trooper Echo return in this week's episode of the Bad Match titled Into the Breach. Now, obviously Echo has been in the show for all three seasons, but this was the first time we really got to see Echo in action like he used to be during the Clone Wars. And I gotta say, it was really heartwarming. I did not expect to see this much of Echo and have Echo basically returning to him being an ARC Trooper again, more so than just him being a replacement for Tech. With that, we have to ask the question, who will be present during the Siege of Tantus, and also who will be left standing at the end of the season? Well. I have to say, this is a theory video, but I believe I'll be pretty much spot on with this theory just based off of everything we've gotten throughout the season. I would just like to ask that you'd like and subscribe, we're so close to hitting 800 subscribers and my goal is to hit that by May the 4th. But without further ado, let's just get right into the video. So with the question of, will it be present during the Siege of Tantus? Well, obviously we know it's going to be the Batch, aka Wrecker, Crosshair, Hunter, Echo, but also the final episode of the season is called the Calvary House arrived, so I'm full heartedly expecting to see Rex, Wolf, Gregor, and the Underground all make a return. But also, I think Commander Cody will be. Now, hear me out. I'm not saying actual Commander Cody, I'm believing CX2. I'm still a firm believer in the fact that CX2 is Commander Cody. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and look on the top right of your screen right now to go ahead and watch it. It's a great video, and it does have a lot of merit, and I believe it is the most likely outcome. With that, I do think that CX2 will probably not live on past the series finale, just, I think it's too late in the story to redeem him. But also, we gotta talk about Commander Wolf. We all know that Wolf, Gregor, and Rex will end up together hunting Jupas on Silos and Star Wars Rebels. So, we already know for certain that they're gonna make it out alive. But, they will most definitely be present during the Siege of Tantus. I think Rex is gonna go around to all the clone cells around and basically do what we saw in Mando Season 2 with Boba and Mando going around recruiting all these other Mandalorians. But, with this show, it'll obviously be the clones. I think this season has definitely paralleled Mando Season 2 the most, so I think this is pretty likely. We already know that there's a ton of clones at 79's Cantina, and I believe that we're going to see some of those characters returning. As well, I'm thinking we're going to have around 20 to 30 clones coming in to Storm Tantus. It's going to be almost like the fight of Exegol, where all these people just come in at the last moment and help overturn this fight. I honestly believe that the Batch are going to be severely outnumbered and they're going to find it out extremely quickly with all the defenses that Tantus has, as well as all the clone commandos. I'm really glad that Gregor is in fact going to be here, due to the fact that he is also a clone commando, so it's not only just going to be Wrecker taking them out by himself, he's going to have help. And to jump back to Commander Wolf really quickly, I believe that Wolf is going to release all of the clones inside of Tantus and kind of take the fight to him from the inside, while Rex, the Batch, and the rest of the Underground go ahead and take him from the outside. We know that Tantus is heavily guarded and heavily fortified, and we're going to lose a lot of clones here. But, obviously, we know, for who will be left standing, it's going to be Rex, Gregor, Wolf, and I'm even going to say Echo. I don't see Echo dying at all in this, but I'm also going to say Omega. We have to remember, that this is technically still a kid's show. Whether you like it or not, Omega definitely is still the main character of the show, and I can't see them killing a child presently. This is, after all, the Disney era of Star Wars. If it was George Lucas, I would be saying something completely differently. I just want to clarify, I love all of Star Wars, I'm just saying that Disney isn't really one to kill kids, and George Lucas, as we know from Revenge of the Sith, doesn't really care when it comes to killing children, which is absurd, but, you know, that's what makes Star Wars special. But unfortunately for the Batch, I believe that Crosshair, Hunter, and Wrecker will all have to die. Without a doubt, Hunter will be sacrificing himself to save Omega, and I'm going to say the same thing for Crosshair. Captain Helzer might try and save him once again, but I believe if that's the case, Captain Helzer will die, but I don't think he's going to be saving him twice. But if Wrecker, Crosser, and Hunter do all end up dying, I believe that Echo will be taking care of Omega in the future. I honestly do not believe Echo is going to die. There isn't enough leading towards it, and it also would just be such a random death. It would be so out of place, and I just honestly don't think it would make sense for the story. With that though, I'm very excited to see where this leads, especially after this episode, we all know that Echo still has the Arc Trooper in him, and Echo just isn't a tech replacement anymore. I know that he hasn't been, but to some people, it really has felt that way, and I can see both sides of the argument. I think Echo would honestly be the most likely one to take care of Omega besides Asajj Ventress, but that's a video for an entirely different day. But I'm going to switch over to the Empire side of it. Who do I think from the Empire is going to survive? I'm going to be brutally honest, Rampart is going to survive, but I cannot say the same for Dr. Hemlock. I definitely believe that his fate is either going to end up in Crosshair's hands or one of his abominations itself. I'm leaning more towards Crosshair, based on the feud that the two of them have had, 
And also, we got to know what's underneath that glove. And I believe that will come out in the final episode. And you might be asking, where does this leave Tantus? Well, go ahead and look on top of your screen right now. This is my video on what could happen with Tantus. We know that there's at least three mountains, including Tantus, that are all under Imperial control. And we had already seen in episode two of the season what has happened to Hemlock's previous lab with an orbital bombardment. And I believe we're going to see that again with Tantus. Although I do not believe Tantus is going to be completely destroyed, I do definitely believe it's going to be inhabitable for at least 10 to 15 years, right up until the point where Thrawn comes into the picture. But like I said, if you want to know more about that, go ahead and look in the top right of your screen and go ahead and watch that video. I go really in-depth into it, and there's some cool theories in there as well. But ultimately, I believe that Echo is going to be surviving, and he is going to be taking care of Omega from the future on. And I believe that Echo and Omega temporarily will return to Pabu. There, they will place Wrecker, Hunter, and Crosshair's helmets alongside Tex goggles and the Lulu doll. And that'll be the way that they pay respects to them. For where they may go, who knows? They might even go to Cutla Quain's old house on Seleucami, but genuinely, they could go anywhere in the galaxy. I definitely believe with the destruction of Tantus, the Empire might honestly even think that Omega did in fact die on Tantus as well. So if anything, that might give them the perfect reason to just stop looking for her. Because obviously we know that with the Mandalorian, that Dr. Pershing is still trying to do what Hemlock was doing 20 years prior. So they obviously still haven't made any further progress from where they're currently at. And if anything, this is going to set them back even more. So I think Omega will definitely be able to get away with Echo and live out the rest of her life free from the Empire. But with it all being said, I would love to hear from you all in the comments down below on what you make of this. I truly believe that Echo is going to be the sole survivor along with Omega, but I would also like to be wrong. But for the Siege of Tantus, I honestly believe that I'm going to be 100% correct with everyone who's going to be present. And who will be left standing? Well, we really just have to find out. But with that, go ahead and tune into Cantina Jargon later today with Joe and myself. We're going to be going over this episode, our theories, some speculation, and maybe even some Dark Force Rising news. But without further ado, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And lastly, may the Force be with you all.